Auzu billahi minash shaitani rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Ati Allah ati Rasul qulul amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself and abdul aji su daifu miskin zalim wa jahalim but for the grace of Allah that we still in existence. And alhamdulillah that Allah granted us a life in which to enter this holy month and to reach towards the holy Jummah. And inshaAllah Allah dress us and complete His favours upon our soul and bring us to the proximity and the love and the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad and to be of service to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad under His only Allah. <coughs> Those ashiqeen and muhibeen whom this holy month of Qamar is always a reminder for us those whom try to follow and adhere to the way of Sayyidina Muhammad to the best of their abilities and to reflect a light of mercy and rahmah and immense ishq and love for Sayyidina Muhammad that the, the way is not a, an easy way and this way of ishq and love is to rid oneself of bad character. In this way of realities, the way of tafakkur and contemplation to be from the people whom Allah describes, none will know it. None will know these realities, none will hear these sounds, none will see these knowledges, none will know these knowledges except those people of tafakkur and contemplation whom they struggle, struggle and strive for a way of taqwa and discernment how to reach towards the design, the Divine Presence to discern between right and wrong, good and bad and to struggle against their desires and the bad nafs in an ever more negative world where shayateen are everywhere, everything is increasing in difficulty. And we posted uh, difficulties with mental illness. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Fortunately, people whom suffer from medical conditions related to their mental status and they have a, an inclination towards spiritual paths. They find themselves more attracted to spirituality and they have to be more cautious when entering into spiritual practices and somebody already having issues with their ability to mentally discern between right and wrong and illusion and delusion. If you add on to that to sit and meditate and take yourself into a world of imagination then you can see how difficult that would be for somebody and how filled that would be with obstacles. That's why the teaching tries its best, one to establish 
<clears throat> when you know that you have a sickness and you know that you have something of an imbalance, you have to be humble enough to seek medical attention right away. We said even the shaykhs suffer from physical sicknesses. So when they're physically sick they have to take medicine, they have to seek medical help. It's a given that in this three prong is the mind, body and soul. These are three foundations that hold up this way. If any time the mind is off and is not functioning correct, spirituality doesn't fix it, you actually will become worse because you become delusional and illusional. Everything is an illusion for a person whom their neurons and their mind is not operating correct. Like a TV that is not plugged in and any type of signal is now entering into that. So the person has to be humble enough to understand that no they need medicine. They have to take themselves to a state in which they're solid, that they have the medicine, they feel the condition of the medicine, then they begin spiritual practices. Otherwise it imposes a, a, a great oppression upon the spiritual path. Same for the one whom suffers from body, means that if the body is not cured and somebody trying to meditate in a state of sickness and in, in severe health issues and they don't want to take medicine and they think that they're going to sit there and meditate and suffer through pain and, and all sorts of difficulties, again that becomes an oppression in which the, the physical lack of health, it will affect the meditation, it will stop the meditations, it will stop the spiritual progress and also affect then the mental condition. So means that it's, it's such a balanced way and such a scientific way, unfortunately the students don't follow that prescription. Again it's like going to a doctor's office and you have a series of medicines and you don't take them correctly. You just sort of randomly take what you want, leave what you want, take what you want. And before you know it you're sort of self-medicating and, and running your own program and that's the danger. And in, in such a dangerous environment as we're living now because the shayateen are everywhere. You just turn the news and you can, you can see the, the order of chaos that's on television is a sign because Allah says, we show you the sign upon the horizon and then within yourself. Anyone who doesn't have any understanding of, of energies and negative energies, turn the news on. And there's not a place on earth that has a sense of peace and that's not chaotic and that for you is an understanding of devils and, and negativity. With that negativity everywhere then the spiritual path becomes that much more difficult and requires that much more discipline. If they don't apply that discipline, well the one who doesn't take their medicine, if they don't take their mental medicines and, and psych medicine for their mental well-being, you can imagine how difficult their path and how incorrect their path will be. Same for the one whom physically doesn't take for their physical ailments and under negative attacks and trying to sit and spiritually heal themselves as a, by becoming even sicker. And that therefore puts an oppression upon themselves and everybody whom is relying upon that person. Means that it's such a, a delicate process in such a difficult and evil environment as this dunya is in this condition right now. A reminder for myself always in the states of meditation and muraqabah, the meditation and muraqabah is for a state of spiritual excellence. That when you train to connect your heart with the shaykh and try to connect, make the connection with the world of light, 
And for the men they visualize their shaykh, for the women they visualize Hajj Amina, Mawlana shaykh's wife and the women look at her picture, connect their heart. This practice of meditation and tafakkur is only to be used for spiritual. It's never supposed to be used for your dunya. The obvious is that the dunya is filled with your desire, your nafs. You can't delineate what is the shaykh's guidance and what is your desire being imposed upon that. So then everybody's delusion about, oh they want this, they should get this, they should take this job, they should marry this person, all delusions because they're using a spiritual connection for their dunya desires. How is that going to be spiritual? It's not meant for that, that's not the connection. So we don't ever get emails tell you how you know shaitan is playing with people. We never get delusional emails in which somebody is saying, Shaykh I'm, I'm connecting and I've been ordered to pray so much it's, it's just so difficult upon me. And I, I've been ordered in my spirituality to make 20,000 salawats and it's just so time consuming. Uh, Shaykh I've been, um, I've been ordered to keep my breathing and, and do my muraqabah, all, all of… think of everything related to ibadah. Nobody ever emails that their mental state push them into such a ibadah that's, oh I can't pray this often, I can't meditate like that, I can't be of service like that. It's never that. So means that you know how shaitan enters now into the, the mental difficulty of a person. Because then all the emails come under this example, Shaykh I, I feel like I, I want this person, I want to communicate with this person, I want to marry this person, I want to buy this car, I want to do this job, I want… Uh, all their dunya desires they're thinking that's their meditation and the shaykh is inspiring to, to do this and to do that or they saw from this holy person or that holy person that they should want something nafsani that is to the benefit of their desire and their nafs. And that's completely incorrect because that's not the way that tool should have been used. We have an email even if somebody's saying, I want to meditate so I can learn how to bet horses and get lottery tickets. It's as crazy. And that's when we understand that you mentally you must not be well, that you think you're going to use such a heavenly channel that for, for such a, a low, a low sort of request and that these heavenly souls would sit in front of you and inspire you to your dunya who to marry, who, who you want, what the, your car, what your house, what all your, your dunya desires that already are within you and you think they're being answered by meditation. But Allah has a holy verse in which He says, have you seen those who make their desires their Allah, their Lord and they follow them and they go astray. Because the desire of oneself is so strong and they either ignore it or hide it and the desire appears in front of them like an idol and begin now to inspire them, you go get it, yes that's for you and you go do this and you go do that. And that's the way of all corruption, every corrupt one started with this understanding is they follow their desire and then it just keeps going, yeah you go do this, you go harm them, you go do this and it doesn't end because shaitan starts to enter, will begin to sit there once he understood that he's deceiving the person and they're allowing it to be a deception, well it doesn't end. 
that you go do this and they start to do every wrong. They, they begin to pass every forbidden line, contacting the shaykh, shaykh's relatives, then trying to issue harm against them. And we've seen it all, 30 years we're guiding people and in this path of guidance. It doesn't stop, first it's inappropriate thoughts, then they begin to act on these inappropriate thoughts, then they become angered that their thoughts were inappropriate and then they begin to, I'm inspired now to inflict harm. And that's when immediately then the police get involved and they go after these people and, and the shaykhs don't play with that type of disobedience and, and delusional thinking process. But for tonight it's very important to understand that this path is not based on that. It's not about meditating to see what you're going to acquire and what you want for your nafs. It's only for ibadah that I connect my heart with the shaykh, I'm asking to see myself in an ocean of power and do my zikr, I do my awrad and that I'm inspired to now go and pray. I'm inspired to do more zikr, I'm inspired now to read Qur'an. I've never gotten an email from a delusional person that said, I'm being pushed so much to read Qur'an I can't take it anymore. Nobody's ever emailed that I'm, oh I have to pray so much, this is very heavy, heavy. But it's always delusional towards the nafs. You know they say, who would benefit from that delusion you have was clearly yourself. So when your nafs can benefit from your delusions, well shaitan is playing with you. But if your nafs is going to be burned by your delusions, where it requires long praying, oh I've been, I've been inspired to fast every Monday, Thursday, when well, nobody's written that. That in my delusional state I'm now, oh I've been ordered to fast every Thursday, Friday, they won't email it because they have to be held to it. That is a struggle, that is an inspiration that would come from a shaykh, that you need to fast, you're doing something wrong. Means that this process is not something you sort of make up on your own. And the signs of this is that the person isolates because they, they, they don't want the guidance of the shaykh. They don't even want to email that, I'm now getting this trickling of whisperings so that the shaykh can immediately cut it off and say, you're delusional man, go back to your spiritual practices, focus on your zikr and your awrad. They don't want to hear the correct, they actually want to stay in a delusional world and go deeper and deeper into their delusion. What the shaykhs in huge awliya described. The, uh, the abode of khayran, what's imagination in Arabic, khayran? I can't hear, you can't whisper, you have to say it. Khayal. Khayal? Yeah. To be delusional in your, your imagination. That's a dangerous abode in spirituality, is when you enter into a delusional world where you're, you're in your imagination, you're, you're this high, you're, you're hearing, you're, you're seeing things, you're, you're, you're at a table with awliya and this, this way of muraqaba, you're to divorce every bad thought. Every thought is uh, Imam Ali described your annihilation within your annihilation. That in every state of my annihilation, if I came across something that was self-satisfying, I saw myself to reach a state, then my role was to negate that state in which that state's not for me my Lord. If my nafs is playing with me I'm going to settle it now, that's not me. If I see myself receiving a dress, uh, an adornment, a gift from the heavens, that's to the benefit of my nafs and whether true or not the role of the seeker was to annihilate his annihilation in which that's not for me. I'm not in need of that and definitely I'm not in need of telling my nafs these sick things. 
is, Ya Rabbi I want nothing but your ocean of power and that I don't exist. Nasi al Mansiya was Sayyidatina Maryam repeated, Oh I wish that I was a thing forgotten. Not that I, I went into Morocco bar and I imagined myself this and that and becoming family with the shaykh and becoming this and I, I want this person, I want to marry this person, I want this thing, I want this car, I want this money. What kind of tariqah is that? So that's not the way of tariqah. Tariqah was to annihilate every thought, every desire, anything you think you're getting, you annihilate it and say, that's not for me. My way was to be nothing and I don't know if it's right or wrong inspiration Ya Rabbi but thank you, I'm nothing, I'm not that one, I'm nothing, nothing, nothing. Because if it is rohani maybe it's a trap for you to see, is that what you want? We give you these things and you're going to let shaitan come to your heart and say, oh this is great, let's get another one. No, so you negate it and say, it's not for me, I came to be nothing. If the seed remains a seed, it will never see the, the light of wave, it will never see the reality of a wave. And whether you're in physical isolation and say, no I, I really want to be a wave, well then they're not going to stop, shaitan is not going to stop, he's going to come into your muraqabah and see that you really want to annihilate or I can make you a seed even within your meditation in which I continuously want to show you you're achieving, you're doing all these things, all these things been given, all these lights are dressing upon you. You're still remaining in a seed, you're still identifying with something in which to become nothing. It's not for me Ya Rabbi, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. I just want to see myself like dust and enter into your ocean of power. And that's why they don't even trust the dream state. The dream state is inflicted by your desire. Means the only time that they even will listen to a dream is if it comes third party unrelated because the third party has no benefit from you. When somebody completely unrelated calls and says, I saw a dream about this, I don't understand what it means because they're not related. A relative can dream, I saw you got a big promotion. Well because maybe you were talking about it, it's something you wanted and you've been sitting with them and they've, they've been also subconsciously thinking, that would be great, I would love that and they come back, I had a dream, you got, a, you got the promotion you wanted. No, but when a third party person calls, I don't know what this means but you were walking like this, you had a job like this, then you say, okay maybe there's credibility but the tariqah way is, and divorce yourself of these things. Because it's just your own desire inflicting back what you want to see, what you want to understand, what you want to achieve. This way is to be nothing. It doesn't have any big hype and, and big sort of glamour to it. Just this way of nothing is the reality of all these knowledges. So anyone who enjoys these knowledges and these realities, it's the way of the wave in which the seed vanishes and enters into these oceans of, of infinite rahmah, infinite mercy. And <clears throat> traversing all of these landmines that the nafs is going to play with the physical body and then when he sees the person is committed they're going to go now into their spiritual practices, oh he's not leaving you there, that's when he's really going to come and hit even harder and keep whispering and whispering and whispering. And that's why then it's the discipline is a science that you're in wudu, you're, you're meditating, you're visualizing the shaykh, you're connecting with the shaykh, you're entering into this meditation to be nothing, I want to be dressed by these lights and I'm going towards my ibadah. Do my zikr, my breath, my energy practices, that's it. Not sitting and looking, it's like a television and you're watching Netflix. 
Why, why are you even thinking like that? You're not supposed to be looking for visions and sights, it's to say, I know that you're in front of me, I feel the presence in front of me, I have to do my zikr, I have to do my awrad, I'm gonna breathe that I'm nothing, fill me with lights and energies. And when the slightest deviation is to be negated and help me at nurmuhammad.com, not trying to find our WhatsApp number but help me at nurmuhammad.com. Shaykh is not going to sit there like a secretary and, and type you know 10 pages for each person but you email the help me at nurmuhammad.com then all of these letters because there's nothing new under the sun, nobody is uniquely having experiences. We have it all already in letters, for 30 years we're doing this. The letters will all come back and say, okay you need a taweez, you need an energy, you need your meditation, you need your practices, you have to go back to your connection and pay no attention to these delusions and these illusions. You're being sidetracked by shaitan. You have to reach a state in which you're nothing. You have to feel that you've emptied out, you have to feel a tremendous amount of energies begin to overtake the body. And they feel, they get heated, they get lit up with their energies. But shaitan is going to then make everything delusional, go into your mind and before you know it the person is spending so much time in the mind, the very thing they were supposed to empty because the first zikr was, La ilaha illallah because the delusions are not happening in here. Nobody's in their heart coming up with all these crazy things, they're in the head, you weren't even supposed to be in there. It was supposed to be shut off, La ilaha illallah. So the only thing in here is illallah. So in illallah doesn't talk about lottery, doesn't talk about business, doesn't talk about what car you were gonna get, doesn't talk about what wife and man or what uh, property you want to achieve. It's illallah, nothing but Allah Zawajal. It's all about I'm nothing. I'm coming to the door and the threshold of annihilation and nothingness, I want to be nothing. And if you achieve that what happens is the ocean of power. Ya Rabbi just let my, my atom to reach into this ocean of power and dress me from your qudra, dress me from these oceans of al-hayat and that's the reality. But you know shaitan want to pass to be deviated instead of going La ilaha illallah they go La ilaha ah, back to their head. And they're doing all their muraqabah in here and all their spirituality became here. You, you missed it, you were way off, you lost the tariqah. Everything in the tariqah is here, illallah. La ilaha illallah, illallahu, 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 there's nothing but Allah. In that heart, in that power, not your property, not your, uh, your physical desires, not what you want to achieve of your career is not in here. So the muraqabah is based for here. The mind is, is for dunya and, and whatever you want to do with the mind. That's why don't let your mind hijack your spiritual path. You have to negate the mind that keep your tafakkur, keep your practices in your heart. And that's why then you calibrate when you, you know it's going off, we clarified it just now, we've clarified it many times, you're going off, you're off, go back into your heart and keep it only for Allah only for ibadah and worshipness. And keep your connection with help me at nurmuhammad.com by emailing. As soon as you isolate and, and go into the, the world of delusions where well, shaitan is there big time and that's when all of these other talks have happened now. Well that's all the shaitans want is people whom are like a, in a VR, they're in a virtual reality of their own making. You didn't even buy the goggles and from from Facebook you made your own where you're just in your delusional world of the mind. And that's the dangerous, not supposed to be there at all.
These thoughts are not supposed to be there at all. Everything is about the worshipness of Allah and the state of nothingness. We pray that Allah give us support in this month of the moon which is even more pounding, more lights, more energies to negate the head so that to spark and revive the heart. The heart is the Qibla, the heart is the Hajj, the heart has the Kaaba, the heart is the house of Allah and the moon was only supposed to follow. But when your head became too strong then you're completely mixing the whole process and your meditation is all in your head where it should be in the heart. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us with this holy month and the immense amount of lights Allah sends into the heart and that that muraqabah burn the head. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. When you do the zikrs think what you're saying, you're moving la to your head. It means that the reality of negation that la ilaha illallah, illallah, that all this muraqabah is to reach illallah who. So in there there is nothing from dunya, don't take your muraqabah and bring it into the house of Allah He's not interested in bringing your dunya into that reality nor is it welcome there. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.